Okay, I wanted to do this video on a chronic wasting disease. Uh, if nobody's heard of this, this is also known as a mad deer disease. Now I wanted to put this out there because I've read a lot of myths, lies, and just just completely rumors and, and, and just, just completely wrong statements put out by anti-hunters on this. I also wanted to inform a lot of the people that, that, that don't know about this disease and, and, and don't know how it's affecting the deer population. Now this is a, what they call a prion disease. Now prion diseases are also, you know, Crucial Jacobs disease in humans and uh, mad cow disease in cows. And uh, this is a disease that is uh, caused by prions. And uh, those that don't know what prions are, prions are uh, misfolded and uh, mutated uh, proteins. Uh, when these these proteins themselves aren't able to reproduce and do not function properly. Now when they enter into an animal and infect it, uh, basically what they do is they uh, start affecting the proteins uh, within the, uh, the uh, neurological systems, uh, you know, the nervous systems of the, uh, of the uh, infected animal. Um, they will take over these, pri uh, you know, take over the uh, properly formed proteins and, and the healthy proteins and will themselves take over and, and cause them to reproduce the, the, the prions and eventually destroy and, and kill off the uh, healthy proteins inside the body. When this is done, this uh, results in a, in a lot of uh, neuro neurological problems and eventually will lead to death in the animal. Now in deer, like I said, with the, uh, you know, you have the chronic wasting disease, which is the one in deer. This one, uh, this disease was discovered in 1967 in captive animals in Colorado. Okay, in 1981, this is when they discovered it in the wild. So far, it's been fairly well contained in the wild. Um, it consists mostly in the wild uh, in the states of uh, you know northern Colorado, southern Wyoming, few spots in you know few spots in you know southwest Nebraska and uh, northwest Kansas. Okay, um, there have uh, been some cases in New Mexico, New York, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Utah, Kansas, South Dakota, West Virginia, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. But these have been very low and most of these have uh, just been within the uh, captive population of the animals. Now this will affect only mule deer, whitetail, and elk. And uh, it pretty much, just about pretty much needs a direct contact between the animals to actually spread this disease. That's the reason it's stayed fairly low in the wild. Um, numbers for the wild, it's been 5% in mule deer, 2% in whitetail, and less than 1% in elk. And, um, now it's a lot higher in rates in the captive population. Within the captive population, uh, you know, when they find when they find it in the captive population, usually it's about 90%. Which, you know, since it takes direct contact with them being in a smaller confined area, yes, you have more chance of it being spread, and you'll have higher rates. That's why this is. So far, this disease has not crossed over into humans. There's been no reported cases in humans uh, at all of of, of this. Um, there's still studies being done on it. But as of right now, there, there, there's no cases of this being spread into humans. Um, this is the disease that, that really needs to be watched out, though. I mean, this can affect and kill off a lot of the uh, deer population in North America and, and become something very bad if it's not contained. Now, with the animal, once the animal catches the disease and it spreads into them, um, it takes about uh, anywhere from 18 months to two years before they start showing symptoms. In some cases, it has been noted to be it take as many as five years for them to get, you know, for them to show symptoms. And usually, it doesn't affect deers until they're over the age of two. But it has been found in cases of, of deer as young as 17 months to uh, have this disease. Now, once they are infected, they, uh, like I said, it affects their uh, neurological systems, and uh, they begin to uh, they begin to drool produce excess amounts of saliva, um, they get uh, ticks, trouble walking, uh, they begin to waste away, they have trouble swallowing, they will drink uh, large amounts of water, they become dehydrated, and their urine output uh, increases dramatically. Uh, eventually all this will lead to death and uh, usually within a very short period once they start showing symptoms. Now um, even though this is not crossing over into humans uh, both the CDC and the USDA who are both monitoring this mon monitoring this, excuse me um, do say to avoid contact with any known affected deer infected deer and uh, any deer that uh, you suspect may be infected. Um, if you have a deer that you suspect may be infected um, most of the states have testing programs set up for it 
um, you know, you can uh, contact your state wildlife management agency, whatever it, it may be, and have them check it. Um, there are daily the, the, uh, finding out more about this. Um, they're coming up with a blood test now to uh, find out more about this disease. They also have programs on finding, containing, and uh, euthanizing uh, infected animals. Um, I would ask everybody out there to contact their wildlife agency and see what they can do to help about this because this can become a very big problem that could you know, wipe out the deer population here in North America. Um, I believe that is about all I got. Uh, if anybody out there has any questions, any comments, anything they want to add, just, just put it in the comments section and I'll answer it as quick as I can. Y'all have a good day.